Happy Easter! Good morning and welcome to Irvine United Congregational Church on this day of resurrection. First off, I know it's been kind of gloomy this morning, not exactly a sunny day, not what we expected, but I want to remind you that today we are celebrating the light that breaks forth after a long night that lights up the gray and the gloom and breaks into our lives. And it is in the midst of gloom that we need the light the most. So it's fitting, actually, that on this gray and somewhat gloomy morning, we've come here to celebrate Easter because this is where Jesus shines. May that light shine upon you this morning, and may we carry it out from this place to let it shine in the world. And you know what else about gloomy days when the light shows up? There's rainbows. Did you see one this morning? I did. What a perfect way to celebrate Easter. So thank you. Thank you for being here at our proud, open, and affirming Just Peace Global Missions Creation Justice Progressive Christian Congregation of the United Church of Christ. Thank you. Here, we strive to be a multicultural, multi-generational community that is ever expanding our understanding and our act of welcome, seeking justice, sharing love, and living with joy as we grow in faith and community together. So we're just so glad that you are here. And if it happens to be your first time, thank you. Thank you for joining us this Easter Sunday. We have a lot of special things planned for you, and we hope that you'll stay for our coffee hour. We have Easter crates available. And if you're a visitor, I give you permission to cut in line. Yeah. Right, IUC Sears? Please head to the front of the line, and we want you to experience. We believe in generous hospitality we call it extravagant hospitality so just tell the person that's near you i'm a visitor and every iuc seer will say go ahead <laughs> right <laughs> oh and if you are a part of our community do wear your name tags that's how we'll we'll know that you belong here and you're gonna let someone else go first but wear your name tags it's such a wonderful way to greet one another when we Say one another's name. So uh, if you don't have it now, just grab it on your way out before you get your crate. Um, and if you are a visitor, we do have some green cards that are available. They're at our welcome table. Usually that's outside. It might be pulled in for the rain. But look for the little green cards. If you'd fill those out, that would be wonderful. We can then just thank you for joining us. If you prefer to do that online, a lot of people do, you can just go to our website, poke around there, get to know us while you're there. And at iucc.org slash visitor, you can sign in that way. We are a green faith church. And one of the ways that we manifest that is by not printing paper bulletins. So if you wish to follow along with us, we'll actually lead you through the service. But if you're the kind of person that needs to know what comes next, pull your phone up right now. This is a QR code. And all you have to do is get your camera app out and snap it. And you can download the bulletin so you can follow along. But have no fear. We're going to lead you through the service. And you're going to know when to stand and sing and join us in prayer. We're just so happy that you are here. Um, and if you have a challenge with hearing, we do have some listening devices available. You can get those right in the back at the tech booth. They are more than happy to prepare one for you. Did you know that today is Trans Visibility Sunday? Yeah? Well, it fell on Easter by chance. But I thought, what a perfect celebration of resurrection and life by claiming and celebrating who you are. And so today we want to celebrate trans and non-binary people as we celebrate the transformational experience of Jesus and the mystery of resurrection. What a journey we have been on. These last 40-some days of Lent, we have followed the one who follows the one. 
as we have focused this season on the disciple Peter. He's a relatable disciple precisely because of how human he is. And we have certainly found ourselves in him this season, haven't we? Nobody? I mean, I have. I guess the rest of you, you're like, you're the Marys of the world, right? Well, I'm a Peter sometimes. So one week ago, we joined Peter and the disciples as Jesus entered into Jerusalem with the shouts of hosannas and a palm-waving crowd. And in a moment of epiphany, Peter had a foreshadowing of what might come. Despite the cheers and chants of the welcoming crowd, And then came Thursday where we met at dusk and walked in the darkness of the night. We sat at table with Jesus. We squirmed alongside Peter at our discomfort of the thought of having our feet washed, humbled by the unexpected experience. And as the night went on, Peter processed it all before us. Jesus offering the bread and the cup for telling of betrayal and denial as Peter protested, pledging his faithfulness only to disappear in the night. We know what happened. Jesus was crucified on the cross and the light was sucked out of our world as it extinguished in our sanctuary. What a journey it has been. So now that we see even the dim light outside, we can appreciate the light of a new Easter morn. It has broken and we will be singing our hallelujahs as we celebrate resurrection anew. Our journey with Peter isn't quite over yet. We'll see if we find ourselves in him this resurrection day. I know I will. In fact, our story will continue on as our series continues next week when Pastor Craig takes the pulpit. So I do hope you'll return with us and continue the journey even after Easter Sunday. But it all begins now, and we're just thrilled that you're here. Not only do we have special music performed and planned by our incredible music director, the one and only Dr. Christopher Peterson, who is not only multi-talented and an acclaimed director, a fan favorite at Cal State Fullerton, but as I always say, he has the most incredible heart and commitment to creativity, the easiest music director in the world to work with. We're so lucky to have him, and today our chancel choir will lead us through this service, gifting us with beautiful music. We also have all of our Easter lilies, as you see before us, that have been gifted by members of our church to honor, remember, and celebrate. And together, we have been transforming that barren cross that loomed before us on Thursday night into a work of art. By our own hands, we gift these flowers, this gift of life, back to that cross, and we transform it from being an instrument of death into a vibrant work of art, alive with color and beauty. I hope you'll take a moment to stand before it and capture the feeling that transformation brings to you. And we hope that you will stay, as I said, for the celebration after church. There will be an Easter egg hunt for kids, and there will also be those delicious made-to-order sweet crepes by Crepes Bonaparte. Um, Donations to offset the cost are always welcome, but this is a special treat that we can delight in together and give many of our volunteers a break. I want to take this time to thank our volunteers. There are so many of them, people who time and time again, day in and day out, make church happen, or as I like to say, do church, because church is a community in action. So many people went into making today's service special, and while we love these special holy days, like 
Easter today and Christmas, we're actually here 52 Sundays a year. And for Christians, every day is Resurrection Day. So we give it our all week after week to make this worship special, to be, have it be unique and challenging, thought-provoking, fun even. It's a special place to be and a special community to be a part of. Um, we also know that church is more than Sunday mornings. There's lots of ways to get involved here, whether you connect with us through Bible study or our adult Sunday school or through our secular ministry of our preschool or any of the book groups. We host our mission and service opportunities, even drag queen bingo. We do it all. All of these are aspects of our ministry and the way we do church together. So thank you to everybody who makes IUCC possible. That's truly how we come together and work to bring God's kingdom manifest in our world by this simple act of seeking justice and loving kindness and walking humbly together. Every day, we resurrect Jesus by being a part of the living body of Christ. So thank you, thank you. We've got a lot happening here. Do check out our website, um, our e-blast. There's a newsletter coming out this week. If you see the megaphone QR code, that might come up right here. You can also grab this. It'll take you straight to our upcoming events so you won't miss out. This week, we are hosting the Goodwill. They're going to start coming with us on Fridays and Saturdays for drop-off locations, and we're going to have a grand opening this Friday at 10 a.m. There's going to be a ribbon cutting, the mayor, council member Larry Agrin, and there's prizes, so bring all your good stuff that you're not going to put in the landfill, you're going to give away, and join us on Friday and on Saturdays, and be sure to just find ways to connect with us in this community. Again, we are so happy that you are here. We are honored that you chose IUCC to spend your Easter morning. I very much hope that you find this to be a powerful celebration of community as we remember and relive an ancient mystery made new today. It's Resurrection Sunday. Welcome to IUCC. Good morning, church family. Morning. Happy Easter to all of you. This is my first year as moderator of this church, and that comes with a special privilege of being lay leader for Easter. It's such a joy. Will you please join me in the call to worship found on the digital program or on the screens? Yesterday, we thought death had won. Yesterday, we thought all was lost. Yesterday, we thought Christ was gone. But not today. 
Today we know that love has won. Today we know that Christ is here. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to sing. Alleluia. Alleluia. In church, we love to sing for you, but we love to sing together. And so we will be singing from our hymnal. You can find your hymnal next to you in your seat. Uh, if there's not one next to you in your seat, just look in the next seat. There'll be one there. We're going to be turning to page 233, 233. And it's a wonderful Easter anthem, Christ the Lord has risen today. If you know it by heart and just want to follow along on the screens, that's totally fine. If you'd like to read the notes, you can do that too. Number 233. Christ the Lord is risen today, and we're so uh, excited uh, for Dominic here to be our guest from Cal State Fullerton playing trumpet, too. So, Dominic Bonelli. Yeah, give him a hand. Please stand in body or in spirit as we sing. Fresh Lord. Hey kids, we're back for another episode of Fresh Lord. Today we're capping off Holy Week with Easter Sunday. Holy Week is one of the most important periods in the Christian calendar. It commemorates all the events leading up to the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Holy Week began last week with Palm Sunday, when we celebrated Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and the crowds greeted him with palm branches. Monday Thursday marks the Last Supper and Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Good Friday observes the crucifixion and death of Jesus on the cross. It's a day of solemn reflection and mourning. Holy Saturday is a day of reflection and waiting, representing the time between Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. And Easter Sunday celebrates the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. It's the most joyous day in the Christian calendar. But where is Easter in a world so full of violence and death? 
Where is Easter for the people of Gaza who are facing endless crucifixion but no resurrection? On Easter, it's not just Jesus who is resurrected, but us as well. All of humanity is resurrected into a new way of being. Jesus taught us to put down the sword and take up the cross. He showed us how the power of love triumphs over the love of power. And now it's up to us as an Easter people to bring life to the valleys of the shadow of death. Until next time, keep the trash. Let's sing together as we come into prayer together.
Good morning, church. Last weekend, we had our last comma group. We call ourselves the alternators because we're reading Altar of the World. And that last chapter, two chapters, was on prayer. And our group discussed what prayer is, whether we do it or not, the different ways that we do it. Is it out? Is it in? Is there an object to it? And it's on my mind this morning as we lead, as I get to the privilege of leading prayers this morning. So before I begin, in my own personal bias, I thought we might all take three collective breaths together and hear the sound of each of us breathing. And for a moment, bring all our awareness to everyone in this room at this time. It's kind of miraculous focused concentration. So if you'll breathe with me, just three breaths in. God of today and tomorrow, God of the garden and tomb, God of faith and doubt, we are running towards you. Like Peter on that Easter morning, we simply can't stay away. So with beating hearts and wide eyes open, we have arrived in this sanctuary this morning, bringing with us questions hopes, fears, joys, concerns, worries. Hear these prayers in any way we do it as we draw closer to you. God of the dawn, we start with our hopes. Thank you for the gifts of this world that instill buoyancy in our lives. Thank you for the curiosity of children, for the sound of your people singing in unison, breathing in unison, for crowded table, tables and crepes and neighborly kindness, for the sun after the rain, the spring after the frost, love after lost, faith after doubt. Like Peter, we have countless reasons to hold on to hope. Highest among them is the joy and promise of this day. Thank you for these holy breadcrumbs on this journey of faith. However, before we found ourselves in the garden, before the joy and the alleluias of this day, we found ourselves at the foot of the cross. So for the things that erode our hope, for the things that stitch doubt and fear into our hearts, we ask your comforting hand. Wrap your arms around all of us who are still locked in that up upper room. Wrap your arms around all who cannot find healing after the longest night. Wrap your arms around all who look for reasons to hope but cannot find those bread comes amidst reasons to grieve. 
creator God like Peter fan the flames of our faith. Like Peter, invite us to step out of our boats. Like Peter, use us to care for those in need, to tell your story, to build a better world. And remember, struggle though we may, we believe. So with awestruck, wild, beating, grateful hearts, we run towards you. We take a moment to bring to both our heart and minds those in our congregation in need of our prayers in whatever form it may take, their names appearing on the screen. We hold them in our hearts. Amen. With feet in the garden, eyes on a cross, remembering an empty tomb, we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For the many gifts, talents, and contributions which sustain our community. If your heart is suggesting a financial contribution, you may drop an offering in the plate this morning. You can visit our website at iucc.org forward slash giving. You can also mail in a check to 4915 Alton Parkway, Irvine, California, 92604. An electronic payment can be sent through Zelle. You can also donate by texting. Simply text the amount you want to give to 949-776-3663 and follow the prompt. At this time, I'd like to invite our deacons to come forward to help with our offering.
We thank you for the generosity of these gifts. May we use them to further Jesus' ministry of inclusion, seeking justice, sharing joy, and living love. Amen. And now, as the culmination of our Wandering Heart series, uh, we'll be singing Return to You. I've read the stories of heartache and of glory. I've prayed every prayer you and I've tasted glory because you say we're worthy I've sung every song for you but I have a wandering heart and a fickle faith can you find me here? Can I see your face? Help me return to you. There's nothing I'd rather do than return to you. There's nothing I'd rather do. The story sounds the curtain tear and even now return to you there's nothing i'd rather do than return to you i'll leave the boy but when the storm comes, I'll let go, and I'll sink faster than a stone. And I've called your name when the world is full of pain, but I still need to see. Thank you that we call them the J team. 
Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to the hands of sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Johanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. He was doubled over, literally curled into himself. He couldn't bear to see anyone, so he just turned inward. His stomach in knots, jaw clenched. He clutched his chest as though he could somehow push out the pain if he applied enough pressure. He hadn't really slept in 36 hours. The few times he'd drifted off, he was jolted awake. Nightmares taunted him, but real life haunted him. He was beside himself. It was the grief, but it was the guilt. He ran it over in his mind so many times. Why? Why did he say those things? Why didn't he just admit that he knew him? God, after all this time and everything they'd been through, Jesus even told him. He'd deny him three times by morning, and he was right. The cock crowed, and he'd lied again and again and again. And worst of all, he ran. He's been hiding like a coward, too afraid to go out. He didn't even try to stop them. He didn't dare watch The women did. Mary, she was right there. She proved herself. She really was his most loyal disciple. All this time he'd been kidding himself. The rock. (laughs) Yeah, right. She was the one who was steady as a rock. She was the one who stayed by his side. She was there. She argued for his body. She helped secure the tomb. Meanwhile, thought Peter, I was just hiding away, trembling. Mary was faithful, and I was a coward. A lying, denying, running coward. There he was, holed up in the room with the others. They all seemed pretty torn up, but Peter was taking it the worst. He felt like it was all his fault. Not only did he not stop it, deny him, but he also ran away. He couldn't even bear to face it as it happened. Thursday night seemed like so long ago. They'd shared in that one final meal. It was strange. It's like he knew it was his last. He was so cryptic. But I'll never forget his words, Peter vowed. No, the bread, his body, the wine, his blood. He looked so tired, but he knew. Of course he knew. Peter knew too. He just let himself believe otherwise. He couldn't bear it. He didn't want to believe it. It just wasn't how it was supposed to happen. 
but here we are. Now there was nothing left to say or do. There was nothing. Just nothing. Anyone who's ever felt despair in the pit of their stomach knows. Anyone who's ever been swallowed up with profound sadness can imagine. Anyone who has felt immense guilt knows the torture that comes from the inside out. The minutes turned to hours and he felt dazed, utterly disoriented, shattered into pieces. There was no thought of a future. Everything was an empty void, a black hole of nothingness. A pounding on the door jolted him out of his daze. The Romans, they found us, hide! Of course the soldiers would pounce early in the morning. Most of them were sleeping, fitfully, but Peter had been laying there, curled up almost comatose, frozen as regret. But that knocking, oh, that snapped him right out of it. He and the others began to look for a place to hide, a way to get out. Once again, Peter found himself in escape mode, running from anyone that might dare associate him with Jesus. His heart pounded faster than the beating door. Before he could find a way out or a suitable hiding place, the door burst open. He was terrified. They all were. He winced as it opened, certain this was it for him. It was Mary. Mary? What was she doing here so early? Why did she come racing in like that? One of the others chastised her for scaring them, but Peter knew they weren't out of the woods yet. Somebody could be chasing her. Something awful could have happened. He stood there frozen, anticipating the bad words that she was likely to report. Soon, the women followed her through the door. She must have ran to the house and she was so out of breath, but she wasn't alone. Mary, the mother of James, Joanna, and a couple of others filed in after her. Quickly, one of the men shut the door behind them. What happened? She was still panting when she got the words out. Jesus' body isn't there. The stone was rolled away from the tomb, and the craziest thing of all was two men suddenly appeared, their clothing gleaming white. They asked us, why would we look for the living among the dead? Do you think he's alive? You woke us up for that? <laughs> Come on, Mary, you women are crazy. That's nuts. Nonsense. Garbage. You saw with your own eyes he's dead. Don't make up stories just to make yourselves feel better. They all began to turn away. Some went back to their beds. Others went to see if there was any food to break their morning fast. All but Peter dismissed them as silly little women. But Peter knew something the others didn't. It wasn't all that long ago that Jesus had taken him up the mountain, and in a blink of an eye, his clothing turned a bright white, and he practically glowed with light from the inside out. Jesus had told him and Peter and John not to say anything. They didn't understand it at the time. It was a strange experience that, in all honesty, scared them. Why James and John didn't perk up when Mary mentioned the dazzling clothes was beyond him, but he knew there was a connection. Actually, thought Peter, what they said made sense. Dazzling white, you say? Mary nodded, and before she could say another word, Peter bolted. He shed his fear of being caught, his cowardice that up until this moment still drove him, even as he felt shamefully guilty about it. But now, now he felt bold. He had to get out of there. He had to go see for himself. He ran to the tomb, no longer afraid of who might see him. He took the shortest route possible directly through the city, passing soldiers on duty as he went. Did they notice him? He didn't know, and he didn't care. 
he was running his way back to Jesus. His wandering heart had stumbled so many times along the way. He had been faithless and doubtful, ignorant and afraid, but now he was bold. The blood rushed to his face and he felt alive again. These last few days, he had been entombed in that upper room, feeling like he was better off dead, a zombie, incapable of doing anything. But he had thrown open the door, emerging from his shrouded sorrow, guilt, and grief, self-pity. And as he felt his feet pound the ground beneath him, he knew there was something to live for. Jesus once again gave him hope. I'm coming, Jesus. I'm coming to return to you. Unafraid, he faced that tomb. He ran inside and saw the cloth in the empty cavern and left in wonder. What happened? He didn't know. But what he did know was that this was not the first time Jesus had left him wondering. This wasn't the first time he had experienced something unusual. The tomb was empty, and that meant something. He knew it. Why do you look for the living among the dead? The words the women had repeated echoed, in his mind. Why do you look for the living among the dead? That was it. You'll never find him if you're stuck at dead ends, in places of death. So get out of the tomb and go find Jesus among the living. They were wasting their time hanging around at death's door when Jesus had come that they might have life. Of course they wouldn't find him in a tomb, and Peter wouldn't find Jesus while he was entombed in the upper room either. No, that tomb of death would give them no more answers. So forever after, thousands of years, we would seek out the tomb and we would question the story, but we would miss it all. Because the tomb doesn't hold the answers. You cannot find the living amidst the dead. Life exists outside the tomb. So walk away. Walk away from the rags of death, the shrouds of sorrow, the confinement of darkness, and live. Suddenly it clicked. Peter realized he was no longer entombed by his own self-creation. He was out in the world. He was looking for Jesus, and he was filled with a feeling he feared he would never feel again. Peter had hope. He didn't have all the answers. But where only moments ago he was consumed with hopelessness, drowning in a pit of despair, now he was out in the world wondering with hope. And while it might not seem like the dramatic ending we'd imagined, any of us who have ever found ourselves in despair, resigned to hopelessness, know that hope itself is a miracle. Hope is absolutely transformational. In very many ways, it is the essence of resurrection because it's the spark that opens us up to life again. Look, Peter doesn't have to have all the answers. He doesn't have to have Jesus right by his side. He doesn't have to know the next part of Jesus' story or even his own. Does he know if Jesus is actually alive? Does he know if he's been raised? Does he know if the Romans took him? No. But for once, this man who has so often found himself frozen with fear, who once nearly drowned because of it, 
who literally just spent the last 36 hours huddled away, terrified the Romans would find him, is no longer shackled with fear. He's been liberated. Liberated by the resurrection. Liberated by the hope of life filled with something more than mere misery, despair, and self-loathing. Because he knew that life cannot be lived in the tomb. You cannot look for the living among the dead. And one thing was clear. Jesus was definitely not in that tomb. It was up to him to look for Jesus among the living. Of course, if there's one thing we've learned these last six and a half weeks of journeying, Peter's wandering heart is not all that different from our own. He's not the only one tasked with finding Jesus outside the tomb. For now, it's up to us to find him alive in our world today. Hallelujah? 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 Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, go out into the world with its gray days and dim forecasts. And know that even when it seems the powers of violence, injustice, and greed seem to have won the day, and we find ourselves stuck in the dead ends of grief and guilt, sorrow and self-loathing, know this, there is still Jesus is out there. All we need to do is look for him in the land of the living. Let the light of Easter shine the way. Alleluia and amen. Hello, Mahana. Are you okay? You okay? I'm so good to see you. Hi, it's so good to see you. It'll make you feel better. Hi. Thank you. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Molly wants to make sure her husband's not sick. Is he? I know. Well, I, I almost said you always have to believe the women, but. Oh, you have to. 
Always believe the women. That's how Peter got it right. Happy birthday. Happy Easter. I'm so, it's your birthday? Happy birthday. Go get yourself a birthday grade. <laughs> oh, first ten tips. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hey, it's so good to see you. Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm so glad that you're here. Yeah, Happy I can Easter. make it. I'm, yes. I'm not sick anymore.